Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and a return worth having. When I'm sitting here on the side of a building, basically staying out of the bright sun and heat or out of the showers of the rain of this time of year, it's my right to be here. I'm not interfering with anyone else's life. I'm not pestering anyone for pocket change. And I'm literally just being present in my own realm, my own world, my own career objectives, and my own home, if you will, and that I'm a traveler at this time in life. I became a traveler when traveler when <coughs> elder siblings and a elderly parent who was sort of out of her mind hit my life. And then along came that with illegal and immoral, highly unethical and highly unprofessional law enforcement that decided to go after and destroy my life so that they could steal my property rights to many antiques and artifacts that I brought home from my life overseas. I find that highly offensive that we have sheriff in this land that want to squander their rights to American citizens meaning they like to select and take trophies for life. When I was staying, unfortunately, in a jail cell alone because of the fear of people in other spaces about how people would interact with me if they told them things that were not their lawful right to speak about, that openly I was molested, I had my beard tied in a knot, and I had parts of my genitalia shaved. It was an incredibly immoral act, but here's the problem with these people, is they believe they can get away with these things because Who's going to know? Who's going to see it? Well, here's the deal. Everybody knows what their bits look like. Everybody knows how much hair they're supposed to have down there. And frankly, it's immoral that I even have to discuss this in today's society. But it's what these people do. It's incredibly, incredibly humbling, humiliating, and life, not affirming, but life debilitating that people who are total strangers from you can get access through this continuity of care program across various hospitals and technology networks to your records, to your medical files. And every doctor uses a different type of coding system to, based on their concepts of, well, God, or their concepts of what's right to code to the best pricing structure for someone who needs coding. And my late doctor, unfortunately, died of an aneurysm. So that had to put me into a tizzy looking for a new medical doctor that had any clue in my state about how to handle something that was very private to me. But at the same time, I had siblings that kept monkeying around and making comments about my medical rights, my mental health rights. And I'm like, look, motherfuckers, I've been running a business. I've been having a career. I've been dealing with a wife. I've been handling a child that was a little bit wayward because it didn't start out well in life. But let me explain something to you. I've handled my life. But you, illegally, immorally, and unethically, unprofessionally decided to monkey into my life. And you broke laws when you did it. You stole mail. You stole property. You stole safety rights. You stole property rights. You stole personal information. You stole medical information. You stole life insurance information. You put my degrees and my, my banking cards and everything in basically where? A safe deposit box of yours? In the trash can? Not thinking I deserve to have my property back after, after totally serving my time? I don't think so. You've gone out of your way to steal my life. But here's the deal. You're doing it in front of God in heaven. So whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in Jesus Christ or not, whether you're pagan like me who hates Christians at this point in my life because of the bullshit they lie to themselves about what isn't isn't their right in this world, I have to tell you, God is not pleased. And if God was pleased, we wouldn't all be facing this concept of COVID. If God was really a loving God, people say he wouldn't give this. And that's not true. Every millennium, God brings about a disease, a plague, an epidemic to clean house of the illness of people's minds, the illness in people's hearts, and the absolute devoid of God in their souls. The void of God in a person's soul is what makes them believe that they have the right to lord over someone else's life. Since I arrived here in this community where God definitely put me here to probably show some people in a, in a large organization at the top of the best type of nation that we live in, that there are illegal and immoral people already living in our nation. We don't need any more foreign citizens that don't regard our laws. We don't need any more people who are willing to take an income and network but not pay our taxes. We don't need any more people who are willing to gossip and spread things across their social networks that harm people, that create violence, that, st that stir hate. I don't understand why we're taking a trip down memory lane to certain massacres in the past unless we're going to pull ourselves out of it to really promote peace for going forward in the land. 
America is no longer a melting pot. It should have been, it could have been, but it didn't work out that way. We became more of a smorgasbord, and now we can become a little bit more of a selective buffet where people are really wanting to pick and choose what they do. But here's the deal. As a white person, I don't change who I am based on who I'm talking to. I do sometimes struggle in my own with, I don't know what to say to this person because I don't have the same socioeconomic or ed educational level of background. So that sometimes makes me challenged. But I have learned in my life that listening skills are essential and the gift of listening allows you to hear things. But there's always a bunch of game players who want to say, do you have this? Do you have that? And I look at them going, you're a total stranger to me. It's none of your business if I have a lighter on me. It's none of your business if I have gadget on me. It's none of your business. All these things you're asking about, whether or not this is my computer or not. Of course it is. Why would I have somebody else's computer? Give me a motherfucking break is what I want to say to these people in the black community. But I can't do that because I'm white. And I'm not trying to be racist because my late wife is, and my late son were Japanese. So I know something about the multicultural, multifaceted, bicultural community and bilingual community of the world. But when I'm talking about my life, I'm talking about my life. But my encouragement to you is to consider your life in relation to not what I'm saying about me, but what it could mean for you. What it means is that law enforcement can break the law. They can steal your phone. They can impede your rights to receive telephone calls for your business. They can literally close down your tax ID numbers. Who the hell gave them the right to do that? Then if they can commandeer you, if they can drug you in, in a cell and they can do things to you, that is an incredible, offensive, sexual assault and attack. In life, we have moments of time to say, this is my body, right? Like it says in the Bible, this is my body. And did Jesus really say, do that in remembrance of him? I don't think so. It's absolutely out of control what people are doing today. That people are thinking that they have the entitlement right to put their hands on your body when you're sleeping at night. Or put your hands in your pockets to steal what you've got held in there tight. Or literally put their hands in your baggages, in your briefcase to take whatever they like. That is not American culture. That is a devoid totally devoid of any type of godless, godliness in the world there is today. The Dalai Lama is right about a lot of things, that peace comes about through peace. It doesn't come about through violence and war, but our Second Amendment gives us the lawful right to defend our bodies, defend our families, and defend ourselves. It does not give any National Rifle Association the right to tell people to go out to kill people. That is an illness. That is a horrible thing. The right to life needs to go and expand far beyond the concept of protecting fetuses to completely protecting every human being, especially American citizens, in our country, right to life. Meaning you don't have the right to kill me. You don't have the right to interfere with me. You don't have the right to engage with me unless I socially provide you permission. But please, don't play games with me, little girls, about how we're going to be all social friends and we're going to do everything until you're done in the end of your game. And then you'll say, oh, I didn't have that relationship with them. Bullshit. You made intimate, intimate conversation, you made intimate talks, you made dates, you made all this sort of stuff, and then you're going to try to walk away like something's wrong with me. Bullshit. But what I'm talking about is a handful of items. And my handful of items that I talk about, sorry, well, I've got a runny nose, and because someone actually stole my protanin from me, which takes away the drip, the nasal drip that I have, and it takes away the breathing problems that I have, and gives me the ability to have more energy than I need. But in life, there's always some monster who thinks that they own something that you own, and that's not true. This is the reason that I'm totally opposed to this concept of letting in refugees and letting in all these people who've been here illegally and immorally and probably already stealing from us. Because every night I lay myself down and every day I wake up, there's something that I purchased myself or that's been gifted to me that has been stolen from me. And I'm just sitting there thinking, who the hell are these people? What monstrous parents did they have in their life to believe that that could happen to them? Because, what, has that been happening to them so they're going to do it to other people? Or do they have no moral compass at all?